I-16 Property Plant and Equipment Classification and Initial Recognition As mentioned before, this serves as a summary or a mind map of the total content of I-16. Currently, we're going to focus on recognition and specifically initial recognition. The first aspect that we have to focus on is the classification of items. Why is the classification of an item so important? It has a direct influence on the accounting treatment of that item. Let's look at an example. South African Airways owns an aeroplane. Boeing also owns an aeroplane. In both instances, the entity owns an aeroplane. But what's the difference? South African Airways uses this aeroplane to transport travelers with the purpose of generating economic benefits, where Boeing manufactures this aeroplane with the purpose of selling it to generate economic benefits. South African Airways would therefore classify this aeroplane as property plant and equipment and would have to apply I-16 in accounting for it whereas Boeing would classify this aeroplane as inventories and would have to apply IS-2 when accounting for it. Because the classification of an item is so important, the standards also assist users in classifying these items. What do we have available in IS-16 to assist us with this classification process? We have a definition. The definition of property plant and equipment from paragraph 6 in I-16 is as follows. It is first of all an asset. This we've seen before in this conceptual framework that an asset is a resource controlled by the entity as a result of a past event from which economic benefits are expected to flow. This has been dealt with in quite a lot of detail in the lectures on the conceptual framework. Let's continue with the definition of property, plant and equipment from I-16. First of all, it's an asset that needs to be tangible. Intangible assets have their own standard that, that regulates the accounting treatment thereof. Therefore, for something to be classified as property, plant and equipment, it has to be tangible. You have to be able to see it and touch it. Further, property, plant and equipment is used by a company in either production of goods, rendering of services, for rental to others, or for admin purposes. And it is used over more than one period. So key aspects coming through from this definition is firstly the fact that this property, plant and equipment is used by the company over more than one period. Examples of this would include machinery or plant that an entity uses to, production, to produce inventories for the purpose of selling the inventories. Rendering of services would include the aeroplane by SAA or the fleet of vehicles used by Avis rendering a rental car service. Rental to others can refer to a company who has photocopier machines that's rented out to its customers over more than one period. Admin purposes could refer to the entity's office equipment or computers that's used for administration purposes. In all these instances, the purpose of the item to the company, the reason and the purpose that it is used for, will be key in classifying this item as property, plant and equipment. As opposed to property, plant and equipment, Let's just briefly recap the definition of inventories. Inventories are also assets, but they are held for sale in the ordinary course of business, like your aeroplane by Boeing. It's in the process of production for such sale. So the entity is producing these inventories for purposes of selling it. In the form of materials or supplies, to be consumed in the production process or in the rendering of services. 
that there is very specific differences between the definition of property plant and equipment and the definition of inventories. Let's now look at the recognition criteria in I-60. Once we've now identified that an item must be classified as property plant and equipment, we need to determine whether that item can now be recognized as property plant and equipment. For something to be recognized as property plant and equipment, the following needs to apply. The cost of an item of property plant and equipment shall be recognized as an asset if and only if it is probable that future economic benefits associated with the item will flow to the entity and the cost of the item can be measured reliably. Further highlighting or supporting this recognition principle is paragraph 9 and 10. This standard does not prescribe the unit of measure, the i.e. what constitutes an item of property, plant and equipment. Judgment is required in, apply, in, in applying this recognition criteria. Paragraph 10. An entity evaluates under this recognition principle all its property, plant and equipment costs at the time they are incurred. These key elements of these paragraphs will be highlighted going forward. So let's look at the summary of the recognition criteria that we've just recognized and saw in the standard. Initial recognition. When can something be recognized as property, plant and equipment? Firstly, there needs to be a definition that's met. And now we are referring to the definition of property, plant and equipment as per I-16 and not only the definition of an asset as per the conceptual framework. Together with that, there needs to be probability of economic inflow as well as the cost needs to be reliably determinable. This links back to the framework, but what is important to note is that the definition is now very specific in terms of I-16. What we gathered from paragraph 10 is the following. Every time costs associated with your property, plant and equipment is incurred, every time those costs are incurred, it has to be evaluated against this recognition criteria before the cost can be recognized as property, plant and equipment. And this is where we now introduce the new concepts of initial recognition and subsequent recognition. Every time initially and subsequently that you incur costs associated with property, plant and equipment, it has to be evaluated against this recognition criteria. <clears throat> Under this concept, the first thing we have to focus on is the concept of components. Why is components so important when we consider initial recognition? Let's see what the standard says in paragraph 43. Each part of an item of property, plant and equipment with a cost that is significant in relation to the total cost of the item shall be depreciated separately. An entity allocates the amount initially recognized in respect of an item of property, plot and equipment to its significant parts and depreciates separately each such part. The rest of paragraph 44 just highlights this through an example. How can we summarize this? For purposes of recognition, components plays an important role. The identification of components is the basis for the recognition and derecognition of property, plant and equipment. Each part of this property, plant and equipment with a significant cost in relation to the total cost of the item will be depreciated separately. So at this point, after we've now concluded that an item may be recognized as property, plant and equipment, the components of that item will form the basis for this recognition. Let's just illustrate that in the, 
in, um, at the hand of an example. If you have an aircraft with a total cost of 6 million, the engine and the body is two significant components. The engine has an estimated useful life of 10 years and the body an estimated useful life of 20 years. So the moment you have different components of one asset with different useful lives, that will be your first indication that you are dealing with different components of one asset. Then they give you the estimated percentage cost of total cost. The engine is 60% and the body 40%. The depreciation policy of the entity is straight line for both these components. That will give you depreciation for the engine over 10 years is the 3.6 million over 10 years giving you 360,000. The body has a useful life of 20 years. So you have to depreciate the body component separately. That would be the 2.4 million over 20 years giving you 120,000 per year. So the depreciation expense for 20 years would be 480,000 rand for the first 10 years being the 360,000 plus the 120,000 that we've just calculated. After the first 10 years, the new component, the engine, will have to be replaced. So then the annual depreciation would be the 120,000 on the body plus the new depreciation relating to the new engine component.